Good morning, um, and thank you, Chairman O'Malley and Minority Vice Chair Sneller and distinguished members of the Transportation Committee. It is a privilege and a joy to appear before you today to discuss my bill, HB 4060, which would designate a portion of M10 Highway in Detroit, the Aretha L. Franklin Memorial Highway. And I have to tell you, it was the hardest thing to try to create a very brief summary of a person whose legacy is so enormous and expands over six decades, but I'll try. So here goes. Aretha Franklin, Michigan's musical matriarch, daughter of Detroit, the queen of soul, the ambassador of R-E-S-P-E-C-T. <laughs> this beloved, iconic, legendary, renowned musical impresario provided the soundtrack to the American story for over six decades. Her talent spans from art forms from gospel to jazz to pop, and of course, soul. Over the decades, no other woman in American musical history has earned more career honors than Miss Franklin. Mrs. Franklin was the first woman inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987. Her Lifetime Achievement Grammy came in 1994. The same year, she was a Kennedy Center honor and she was twice named as the greatest singer of all time by Rolling Stone. But Ms. Franklin is more than a legendary artist. She was also a civil rights champion and a humanitarian. What is less known is her indelible mark she's left on her community throughout her life and her commitment to social change. Growing up in her father's church, she was surrounded from childhood by the faces of the civil rights movement. In fact, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a frequent guest at their home. At age 16, Franklin went on tour with him, hosting concerts with Harry Belafonte and Sidney Poitier to raise funds for the civil rights movement, and in particular, Dr. King's Poor People's Campaign. In February of 1968, King would return to Detroit to help Mayor Kavanaugh celebrate the declaration of Aretha Franklin Day. And in an ironic series of events, just two months later, Ms. Franklin would sing at Dr. King's funeral. As she rose in popularity and her music crossed cultural boundaries, Ms. Franklin did not abandon her sense of activism and her love for black people. She fought for our respect and the respect of all. Throughout the 1960s, she included the clause that she would never perform for a segregated audience. Through all of her fame and success, Ms. Franklin never forgot her roots. She uplifted a community and, and a nation with her generosity, her integrity, and her activism, all rooted in community service. Dr. King's daughter, Dr. Bernice King, praised Ms. Franklin as a shining example of how to use the arts to support social change, and I agree. In fact, um, I'll just point out um, two things on this PowerPoint here that you may not know about Ms. Franklin and her civic engagement. Um, one is that she uh, participated in the, uh, not only participated, created an original song for the AARP called Stand Up For Yourself, which I, if I could play that video all by itself would, would be the testimony, all the testimony I need. And it became the, na the anthem for our health care reform. She also, bet you didn't know this, donated her time to create, to re, um, what do you call them, remix her 1968 heat, um, hit, Think, and to think, don't drive with drugs or drink. Think, think, okay. <laughs> um, yes, and as a humanitarian, um, she gave generously and was um, acknowledged by the Grammys in 2008 as Music Care's Person of the Year for her contributions to Save the Children and Easter Seals, and she supported many um, shelters for homeless women and churches in Detroit. With this legislation, we seek to honor the life, legacy, and contributions of our fellow Michigander, Aretha Louise Franklin. And I, I think at your desk you have a bio. And I tried to just do the highlights in two sheets. 
And I want to highlight this point as well. In 1986, Governor James Blanchard um, named Ms. Franklin the greatest, Michigan's greatest natural resource. In 2003, Ms. Franklin is named Michigander of the Year. And I bet you didn't know, Aretha Franklin has 12 honorary doctorate degrees from universities such as Yale, Princeton, Harvard, Wayne State University, the University of Michigan, and Bethune-Cookman College. The Memorial Highway designation is a fitting and lasting tribute to this artist, humanitarian, civil rights champion, and the community she served and loved. I am proud to begin the 100th legislative session with the support of nearly 60% of House members co-sponsoring this legislation, demonstrating the wide-ranging bipartisan support that exists for honoring the life and contributions of Ms. Franklin, not only to the world of music, but to the local community and state she was proud to call home. I thank you for your time, and I request that you support this bill. I also want to introduce some very special people in the audience today. And everyone's not going to testify. We'll have two. Um, first, how I came to meet uh, Mrs. Franklin is through her uh, sister-in-law, Erlene Franklin, if you raise your hand when I call your name, um, back when I was just a pup in grad school and we were working on a theater production and I had the opportunity to go to Miss Franklin's holiday party and, um, and, and I said to the, someone interviewed me and I said, I, she was the queen of soul. I didn't know when I got there, do you curtsy or, or say hello? I, I was very nervous. And she was just so, such a homebody and generous and giving. Also is Miss Fra uh, Franklin's daughter, Crystal Franklin, who is here, who is Miss Aretha Franklin's niece. I have the president of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated, um, Detroit alumni, is she back? Yes, uh, alumni chapter, um, Lois Bingham, attorney Lois Bingham, who, and if you didn't know, um, Sister Franklin was a Delta as well, an honorary member, and the president of Alpha Kappa Alpha, Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Tau Alpha Omega chapter, Tanya Moore. And next to me and next to the, and coming up to the mic, is the wonderful, the lovely Ms. Sabrina Owens, the personal representative for the estate of Aretha Franklin and Ms. Franklin's niece. All right. So I come in and I start tearing up your stuff, right? <laughs> Good morning and thank you, Chairman O'Malley and members of the House Transportation Committee for allowing me to testify on House Bill 4060. My name is Sabrina Garrett Owens, and I am the niece and personal representative of the estate of Aretha Louise Franklin. As the personal representative of the Aretha Franklin estate, my family and I are profoundly honored to be here today. Joining us from the Franklin family, again, are Aretha's cousin, Brenda Corbett, sister-in-law, Earlene Franklin, niece, Crystal Franklin, and my husband, Oliver Owens. We are honored that the Michigan State Legislature would consider a proposed bill to rename a portion of the M10 Freeway, or as everyone knows it as the John C. Lodge, to the Aretha L. Franklin Memorial Highway. I know without a doubt that my aunt would be ecstatic and filled with joy about this proposed bill in her honor, especially coming from the beloved city of Detroit and state of Michigan. Aretha has been many places in her lifetime, but she loved Detroit and was proud to be a resident of the city. No matter where she traveled, she would always call from her trip and ask, Sabrina, what's going on in the city today? What's happening in the news? What's going on in events? And she always, always looked forward to coming home. My aunt has been honored and has received almost every award imaginable. I know she would rate this recognition among the top. In closing, I would like to say thank you to everyone who had a role in moving this bill forward. It means everything to my family. If the Aretha L. Franklin Memorial Highway Bill is approved, it would not only be big news in Detroit and the state of Michigan, it would be big news on every corner of the globe. Again, thank you for your consideration. You're welcome, thank you. We do have a couple of questions. 
I, oh, I have another um, oh, person. Um, if I can have uh, Ms. Lois Bingham join me to um, okay. president again of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated, Detroit alumni chapter. Good morning, Chairman O'Malley, Representative Love, and members of the Transportation Committee. Once again, I am Attorney Lois Elizabeth Bingham, and I am president of the Detroit Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I appreciate the honor to speak to you today on behalf of the over 750 members of my chapter who support House Bill 4060, which seeks to rename portions of the John C. Lodge Michigan 10 Highway in Detroit as the Aretha L. Franklin Memorial Highway. For those of you who don't know, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated is a private not-for-profit service organization headquartered in Washington, D.C. We have NGO status at the United Nation, and we have over 1,000 chapters located throughout the United States and in eight other countries. There are over 250,000 predominantly African-American college-educated women who have sought membership in our organization since its founding in 1913. Within Michigan alone, there are 24 collegiate and alumni chapters of women who are committed to scholastic excellence and community service. I serve as president of the largest chapter in the state of Michigan and one of the largest chapters in the sorority. One may assume that I'm here today because it is, with, it is without question that Ms. Franklin was an icon in the entertainment industry. One may assume that I'm here today because she was an esteemed member of my illustrious sorority and both of these assumptions would be true. She was the beloved queen of soul whose music touched the lives of people around the world as evidenced by the outpouring of love from people all around the world upon her passing. However, it is not only her impact in music and her status as a Delta that warrants our support. I speak here today in support of the bill because she earned the respect this bill would proudly reflect to the world if passed. The passing of this bill will honor and recognize her dedication to the residents of Detroit, the state of Michigan, and it will pay homage to her philanthropy efforts here and, uh, and abroad. For she was a true activist, and although many of her efforts were unheralded, she showed love for her people, from her annual Thanksgiving meals and concerts in Detroit, to writing and singing songs of empowerment and self-esteem. After her death and at her funeral, many people spoke of her on her relentless charitable giving, the, n the number of donations she made to individuals to cover their housing, medical, burial expenses, any needs that she heard about simply just by watching the local news. Her love of her people, her extraordinary talents, and her commitment to social justice is why our sorority chose to make her an honorary member in 1992. Our sorority is founded on service and she exemplified that love of service. Without question, we know about her um, activism in the civil rights, her efforts to help fund, to raise money to support the, the efforts of many of our uh, historical civil rights icons. While doing all of these things, she continued to live in metropolitan Detroit, and she never forgot the support that Detroit and Michigan gave her in all of her endeavors. She lived a life worthy of uh, distinction and honor, and a, a life worthy of having a portion of the John C. Lodge named in her honor. The Detroit Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, whose geographical reach covers Detroit, Highland Park, Hamtramck, Harper Woods, and the Gross Points, we support this bill. I appreciate the invitation to speak before you today, and thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of my chapter. Thank you. That's all. Very good. We have a couple of questions. Uh, first from uh, Representative Yancey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, I had withdrawn my question because you did address it not once, but more than once that she is a, a member of my illustrious sisterhood, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Representative Alexander. Thank you, Representative Love. Representative Love, what brought you to choose this section of the highway, number one? And number two, how does your bill, House Bill 4060, align with Rep. Yarrick's House Bill 4061? 
So to answer your first question, which is a pretty good one because it was very intentional. I wanted the, um, the intersection that was close to her father's church where she began, the origin. And then it, to go to where it intersected with the world, that this reach was far and wide. So the lodge runs north and south, and 94 runs east to west. And so it is symb symbolic of your, your home, your roots, your foundation, and her reach internationally. So that's why I picked that portion. I'm not familiar with Yarwick's okay. deal. Thank you. Okay. That's your fine. Thank you for that uh, explanation of location. Thank you. Representative Bellino. I just want to say one thing to Rep. Love. You had me at hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very good. I don't see any other questions. Uh, so uh, we're going to move on now. And uh, I need a motion to refer House Bill 4060 to the Committee on Ways and Means. Representative Bellino makes that motion. Madam Clerk, will you take the roll? Yes. Representative Zeisen? Yes. Cole? Yes. Shepard? Yes. Alexander? Yes. Bellino? Yes. Powell? Yes. Affandoulis? Yes. Sneller? Yes. Clemente? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Hodsma? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 13 yeas, no nays, no pass. House Bill 4060 is referred to the Committee on Ways and Means with them. Representative Love, as I told you when you uh, asked me about this bill, I said I'd lose my Michigan card if we didn't <laughs> do this. And uh, as a young man who uh, grew up in Detroit, uh, it's, I'm honored here today to be able to, uh, to show some respect to Aretha. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And as a um, former radio personality yourself, I know she would really be smiling at you right now, giving you a wink. You just gave me chills. <laughs>